available to you, and we'll make all the other um, conversations across the country available to you. But in case you don't want to listen to many hours of, of, of talk, um, uh, Nisa will bring together the main ideas, the main concerns, uh, the main suggestions for how to deal with things, and put them together in a report, which we will share with you. Uh, so you hear from everybody in, in our group, but also across the country, ideas for maybe how to cope with what's going on. Um, and also we'll use that for uh, communicating with the government. We will be writing on the basis of this letters to all the various political leaders. So now I turn it over to, so thank you for participating. Here's Jennifer. She's going to make sure we all know how to use Zoom, the new uh, elixir for all your problems of the world now, it's Zoom. So uh, perhaps you're familiar, but Jennifer will take us through it. Thank you, Larry. Uh, yes, likely many of you are familiar, but uh, just a couple of things for this particular chat. Um, so if you would like to participate in the conversation, please do enable your video. <clears throat> um, and uh, if you don't have video or don't have the capability of doing so, just let me know. Uh, you can either message me directly or just unmute yourself if you'd like to kind of pop into the conversation. Um, <clears throat> I think most of you uh, know how to unmute yourself. I will also try to unmute you as well as, as I uh, call on you or as you raise your hand. Speaking of raising your hand, um, at the bottom there is a menu and one says participants. So if you uh, click on participants, a right hand menu will then pop up and you'll be able to see everybody who's in on the conversation and um, and there's also the capability there for you to raise your hand so as we go through the questions if you have a comment just uh, digitally raise your hand and then I can kind of see who's in line um, and if you can't figure it out that's okay you can also just wave me down and I'll call on you as well um, also at the bottom there's a chat feature so if you enable your chat, uh, there have been a lot of people who have been posting links or commenting what, on what people say as opposed to you know, jumping in if they want to just comment on the chat or have other things to say. You can also privately message somebody via chat if you want to follow up with them uh, privately or ask their contact information, you want to follow up afterwards. Um, you can also do that through private messaging on chat. And uh, one more thing, I will be uh, launching a few polls throughout this conversation. And that's just so that we can collect some uh, quantitative data on um, kind of what you're facing right now. And that is again for the reports that uh, Larry was referencing as well as the letters that we're looking at. So, um, and just to let you know, those polls are completely confidential. So please feel free to take part. I won't know what your specific response was. Um, so yes, at this point, um, Hopefully everybody's somewhat familiar. I, we'll just go around the room, everyone who has their video enabled, and I'll just, uh, oh, and also if I happen to mute you, uh, just because it, it does work best if only the person who's speaking is unmuted. Um, <clears throat> so don't be offended if I happen to mute you. Um, so we'll go around the room. If you could say your name, your um, title, the organization that you work with, if that's applicable, as well as a sentence or two about kind of the immediate effects that all of this has had, the, uh, the distancing and the, the isolation and whatnot and how it's affected uh, the work that you do. So we'll start off with Alan. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alan Klinkoff. Uh, I have uh, two galleries, uh, one in, uh, in Montreal, uh, Gallery Alan Klinkoff, uh, and a gallery in uh, Toronto, Alan Klinkoff Gallery, where we specialize uh, almost exclusively in, in what we call classic Canadian art from, let's say, Kriegoff to Bourdieu and Bush. Uh, the, um, the, the fundamental uh, challenge that we have right now, of course, with the, uh, the doors closed, in, uh, in physical doors closed in both premises, <laughs> really harnessing the, uh, the internet, uh, uh, our our website, which fortunately we've invested in very, very, very heavily over the last uh, four or five years, and also writing, you know, direct emails to to clients, particularly 
um, clients who, uh, who maybe have committed to, to purchases a week or two ago, and uh, and maybe maybe these days are, uh, are are a little bit a little bit gun shy, and so my one of my jobs is is watching those uh, accounts receivables and making sure that everybody is still content with his or her purchase. And then um, after that, in this world, uh, the uh, transportation shipments is a is another big 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 challenge with. Uh, with some of the the obvious uh, trucking firms uh, closed down until at least at least the middle of uh, the middle of April, so we've got uh, we've got our hands full uh, working from homes. My sons working from their homes, and my staff uh, from their homes. Fortunately, we're equipped uh, to make that transition, uh, and we <laughs> we were always able to do that. So from that perspective, we we can at least we can at least just just do it. Um, it's a very exciting and and, uh, and challenging uh, uh, state of affairs we're in right now, and I wish all of you uh, good luck. Great, thank you, Alan. Yes, um, Barbara. Lon, there you go. Okay, you unmuted me. Okay, um, hello. Uh, my name is Barbara Gunnarat Dooney Daigo. Um, I'm artistic director of an Notwara Dance Theater. Um, I specialize in indigenous contemporary and uh, traditional dances. I'm from the Mohawk Nation of Kahnawake. And um, yes, this is, uh, of course, my work is mostly, well, pretty much all about live dance. So it brings people together. So all my shows from, um, for the next two, two and a half months have been canceled. And uh, there's even the question of shows that might go on this summer. How are we gonna prepare for them correctly? Because we can't have our dancers come together in the studio and rehearse. Uh, so there's that challenge of people not being able to gather. Um, also, um, I'm a mentor I have with uh, Les Danses sur les Routes in Quebec for young indigenous and uh, artists from diverse uh, communities. And uh, so everyone's in the same boat and we're, we're trying to figure out how to support and keep community morale up among other dance artists that are younger and uh, maybe feeling on their own. So yeah, there's a lot of challenges, especially because we, the uncertainty of not knowing when we'll be able to come back to uh, rehearse together and finding ways how to continue our work, perhaps online. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you, Barbara. Uh, CJ. I'm trying to unmute you here, there we go. Okay. Hi, my name is CJ Fleury. I live in Wakefield, which is, it's in Quebec, but I feel like we live in a suburb of Ottawa. Um, uh, I, my background is, uh, I have done like 25 years of large scale public art projects and um, maybe in the last 15 years teaching more, uh, teaching in with that, but I've always been trying to break down silos and bring the communities around my projects into um, kind of uh, community arts activism, actually bring people um, from the communities into the projects. So I've been doing that through pub large public art commissions and um, community arts projects. And so I have worked and sat on juries and mostly in Ontario. Um, but uh, in the last year and a bit, I've been the artist in residence for a large network of hospitals, um, continuing care called the Briere Organization. And I'm tasked and passionate about um, setting up a, a sustainable artist in residence program. Uh, since it's in Ontario, I'm, I'm actually um, just, was just supposed to have been starting with two mentees that I was hoping to funnel into the Ontario Arts Council um, uh, community arts program and expand the program, pass it on to them because they're younger artists, these really dynamic, two young dynamic new Canadians. Anyhow, so, um, my residency at Briere 
has been mostly in a complex care situation, which has been really interesting. But I'm just on my 14th day of isolation, returning from a gift trip to somewhere warm. And I'm not sure if I can go back to that work because of my confidence of working in that situation, because I touch the people I normally work with, um, and because we, we try to work at least in small groups. I've been doing large murals and um, people in the hospital and around. And the hospital, this whole Breer organization is also connected to the medical faculty at the University of Ottawa. So the work is really important because it's, gonna, it's supposed to be breaking down silos, which is why I'm really interested in bringing on these mentees so I can place them in the hospital and then I can go and do some of the more big picture work. I feel like I can bring 30 years of trying to work outside the capital A art system, sorry, Mr. Klinkoff, um, <laughs> to uh, bring people into the creative processes um, so everybody can use that part of themselves that I think they have. Anyhow, my project, uh, well, the hospital, the Briere organization recently got a a good sized Ontario Trillium Foundation uh, support to support my work. And I'm have used not too much of that budget and hoping that they just don't cut it off at the end of the year and in August and say, well, you're supposed to be finished by now. Um, yeah, so I haven't had any income in months, uh, which is okay because I somehow have become 64 and own my house. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my situation. Don't want to take too much time. Great. Thank you very much, CJ. Uh, Claire. Uh, hello. I work uh, with the Contemporary Music Society in Quebec, um, uh, in Montreal. But we have, so we have a, a season of concerts. Um, so we had one concert left this year in May, which is cancelled, one large concert. But we also have um, a tribute series where we, which is pretty large scale. We choose one composer throughout the year and we invite everybody to play that composer's music. And there with our partners, there were about uh, 30 concerts across, mostly in Quebec, but also in Ontario and, and BC and um, in different places in Canada. So um, all the events that were left um, for the next two months are canceled. And I'm in charge of the educational activities. And uh, we had a lot of, um, so for schools, what we offer is uh, uh, workshops for teachers and kids. And so in schools, and we also have um, an educational toolkit. So at the beginning of the year, we develop, uh, this is around the, the chosen composer. So this year it's composer Katia McDissi Warren. So we work with her. And we create all kinds of tools so that kids can discover who this great composer is, listen to her music. Uh, they can read a comic book about her life so that they know that composers still exist today. And um, <laughs> because sometimes we think composers are all dead <laughs> and everything. So anyway, so they can get to know a composer. And also we have all kinds of ideas so that they can make their own music creation projects. And so, all the workshops in schools right now are canceled, of course, but we have this toolkit, which is online. Uh, we also invested heavily in this educational platform in the past few years. So it's um, smcqeducation.ca. And so all these uh, resources are online and we're finding um, that people are reaching out to us. Uh, so commission scolaire, a school district, and and also um, like uh, music teacher groups and people like that are looking for, res and, and also parents and kids at home are looking for things to do at home and things to send to their students. So um, we're um, looking at that for a way to reach people right now. And it's working very well. And uh, last thing, um, we're trying to uh, convert one of our big events, Compositeur en Herbe, uh, we're looking at ways to uh, convert it um, to an online event. And so we have, maybe we can speak about that. I have questions and if people have ideas about that, I'd like to talk about that maybe uh, perhaps later. So that's, that's the picture right now. Thanks very much, Claire. Um, Deirdre. 
Hi, uh, my name is Deirdre Potash, and I am the owner operator of Art Will Studio. Um, I'm also a board member of ELAN, which is English Language Arts Network, which CJ is also um, a member of. <laughs> and um, I, I used to be a museum educator at the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts for uh, over 30 years. And I have to tell you that Alan, I loved walking by your gallery and looking at all the beautiful paintings. I always think of you as a superstar. Um, I have a company and what I do is I go into schools in around Quebec and Ontario and I bring art back into classrooms, community centers and um, hospitals. From uh, three years old to 100 years old, uh, you name it, printmaking, drawing, painting, sculpture, etc. cetera. Uh, so obviously all of my cancel, all of my um, projects have been canceled from a full load of uh, art activities to zero. Um, the funding dried up or museums closed or whatever. So last week I started, if you look in the Zoom group chat, I put in a very quick um, overview of the th things that I'm doing. Last week I started a Zoom art class for free, Mondays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. for children and Friday for adults. It's called the Doodle Challenge. Um, I ask anybody who wishes to, to send me their, their doodle. At the end of this event that we're going through, I will turn it into an artwork. I have no idea what it'll look like because I don't know what everybody's going to send. And um, I've also reached out just randomly to different groups uh, to see if they would like to, um, to have me do a Zoom with their population, whether it be children or adults or any such thing. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Deirdre. Um, <clears throat> Jay. Hi, hi, how's it going everybody? Um, so my name is Jay Lemieux. Uh, I'm president of uh, Co-op Collective Vision, which is a multimedia education company. So very much like the, uh, uh, Deidre, um, we do like school contracts. Uh, so we go from school to school. I teach video, but we have teachers who teach photography, uh, stop motion animation, acting. So yeah, all those classes are canceled. And I think a lot of the schools refunded the parents. So yeah, we're kind of out, um, out to dry right now. And then we, another one of our biggest things is we have a summer camp. And so right now the summer camp is up in the air. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen. We usually start in, uh, the end of June, basically when the schools all close. So we'll see, uh, basically registrations were doing really well and then they all just say, at the second, um, you know, uh, I guess the 13th or so, everything just stopped, parents are worried, understandably. And so our big thing is, I think most of us should be okay until the summer, hope if this um, money from the government comes in, but then the summer camp, so that's canceled, that's a problem. Uh, and then, you know, who knows what the future brings. So that's our big challenge right now is trying to figure out what to do with that. All right. Thank you, Jay. Um, Louise. Uh, hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. Um, I work extensively as an artist in schools and cultural mediator with a, a variety of different organizations. Um, I've also had my share of work canceled for sure. Um, most of the work that I've had cancelled is stuff that is primarily acoustic. I'm a musician if I didn't uh, mention that. Um, but it's acoustic instruments. I feel very, very fortunate in the, the fact that I have been on a massive professional development kick for the last three to four years. And so I have the digital skills to be able to convert what I do online. So I have a number of projects that are being converted online and I um, also have people who are approaching me. Um, in order to see if we can offer things online for activities. And that goes the, around the board from arts organizations to educational organizations to parents who want to have uh, activities happening in somehow with their children <laughs> so that this is a positive experience for them. Um, I also work for the Canadian New Music Network and we have a project that is very well placed, I think, for right now because we've been working on developing an online hub for creative music activities. So the hub is not ready yet, but we are looking at making it ready. Uh, 
still have a, a certain number of months to go before that is public. In the meantime, we are looking for uh, music creativity activities that you can do at home. Um, and we'll hopefully start to roll that out and send something out like once a week, just to sort of like plant seeds for people. Uh, so that try not to inundate everybody with like a massive amount of information right now, but just to continue giving them fun, interesting things that they can do without being, you know, a fully trained professional artist. So lots of changes, that's for sure. I feel like I'm going to um, have to suddenly up my skills on uh, becoming an on-screen personality, <laughs> but I'm ready for learning a lot of new things. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Louise. Um, Emma? Hi. Yep. Hi. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you for this. Um, my name is Emma. I run a company called Playwrights Workshop Montreal. We're a new play development center. We work with um, playwrights from across the country in uh, developing new plays. And so um, also we are part of the professional uh, theater uh, theater association. And so a lot of theater companies who also do outreach and educational programs are kind of all grappling with the same questions about how to get um, the work that we do online so that we can keep the artists um, feeling fulfilled, uh, creatively moving forward. And um, I think right now we're, we're sort of uh, the learning curve around what, what media platforms to use, whether Zoom or Google Hangouts or YouTube or Livestream, all, all those things. And because they all have repercussions in terms of um, unions with actors. And then there's the big question around the um, CERB in terms of how do we pay people who uh, work on contracts? How do we keep them engaged without uh, jeopardizing their ability to get uh, the financial help from the government, I think is one of the biggest questions right now. And because we would love to keep engaging people on um, digital platforms, how can we do that responsibly? How do we do it so that um, so that we can keep people engaged but not get them penalized on the other hand? And yeah, I think those are the bigger bigger questions right now. All right, thank you, Emma. Um, is there anyone else who does not have their video enabled who would like to speak? You can either send me a message or enable your video. All right, I think we're good, Larry. If you wanna move ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for sharing. Um, and I think I recognize a couple of faces from our French language uh, um, session yesterday. So welcome back, very much welcome. Um, so we, what I'm hearing, uh, which I hear all the time, is a, a very professional, concerned response from you, that you're thinking about how you can carry on your work and how can you keep people employed and that sort of thing. But so but let me introduce the the personal element, which I think is really important. How, really, the question is, how is this affecting you personally, like emotionally or in terms of your time management? How and how is that affecting your ability to do whatever what you want to do? And this is a where you put your hand up, and and, and Jennifer will notice and call you. Yes, you can either do it digitally or or that way too. De Deirdre. Uh, well, I have to say that um, when I gave the first Zoom class, oh God, ça fait de bien. Uh, I, I have to teach art. Other than it being good for the kids, it, it's it's really really necessary for me. Um, the other thing that I found really find really important is I have to have some kind of routine. Um, not every minute of the day, uh, but. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. Obviously, it includes some art and some kind of interaction with people. So it's one, having routine, and two, I must teach art. Wonderful, thank you. Alan. Uh, first, uh, I, I need to say that as exciting as um, you know, the internet reach that we're all so reliant um, on these days, at the end of the day, I, I must say in a field like mine that 
that personal contact with with people, people coming in and, and talking, you know, just enjoying actual artwork for the artwork, whether they're you know buyers or otherwise, have you know begs the difference. We um, we we um, it's 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 something that we we sorely sorely miss at this point. Uh, I, uh, I I did say before we were fortunate that that we invested so heavily in the internet um, that um, we recognize that in fact it's it's the consumer who has chosen to visit us on the internet and and I will tell you that we have um, visits sometimes on individual days on our site that um, are greater than in both physical premises is combined in an entire year so it it it, it shows you that the interest of in our particular case the the consumer or at least the consumer base because it's not even located in montreal or toronto from somebody in Kelowna or or corner brook to drop in but they can drop in 365 days a year in terms of uh of routine um i i agree one 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 needs needs a routine and i i still have to get up and i think my wife would say it's an emergency service from my family that i actually go to the office to have that have that that separation i'm 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 not used to uh, to working at home, and and I I prefer to come to the office surrounded by artwork and the, the sort of the tools of my trade, and, and get down to business and make phone calls to people and send emails to people as as best I can, or I figure out maybe a a, a chat program or a, a a blog post that I'll ask my sons to figure out and and distribute to a community just just even as a distraction. Uh, for people who are who, who are uh, you know self isolated, for instance, I just I, I had theoretically a show, a very important show opening right last week, which I couldn't open, and one of my sons actually brought in a um, a photographer to do a 3D visual tour, a photographic tour, and it, it's very interesting the the, uh, the the mechanics and the and the viewership. And I don't have to tell you, it would, be, it would have been totally insensitive to send this out as a marketing tool to, you know, to say people were coming by. It, uh, but I, I can tell you, it went out to a few thousand people and, and brought a lot of entertainment value. The, the enjoyment factor of, of the various art forms that, that we're all involved in. Uh, and I think that that's kind of, in my field right now, the best that, the best that we can do is stay in touch with people and show them be it if you can figure out a way to 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 get your dance people together and put together something and distribute it just to keep people interested and keep your your dance troupe stimulated i think that that can be a, that can be be a great benefit for all the stakeholders right Thank you. absolutely thanks helen uh barbara <clears throat> um yeah so personally um i find i i'm I step back and I observe my progression through all this. Uh, when it first happened is when we um, were starting a very big dance project, the biggest one yet for my company. And I couldn't go to the first week of rehearsals because I had traveled. <laughs> so I had to choreograph, find a way to keep my dancers stimulated in the studio while we were still able to get together. And then we had to cut it a few days in. So. Um, because I, uh, my, my art is uh, very physical and has to do with space and bodies touching and using on other bodies, that, that part is, um, is missing. Um, so when, it, when I first realized that we were gonna stay at home, everyone, I think I got a rush of energy of like, I can do this and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, reach out to people. I'm going to do this. And then it, I stepped back about a week later and said, oh, okay, now I'm scared a little bit. Um, I felt vulnerable. And so I, I didn't have the, the mindset to think about my work so much. And then it progressed to now where I'm beginning to rethink of my work because my work is also my life. It, it's, like Deidre was saying, it's, it's something that's 
not, not just work. Like for example, I'm okay financially for now because I had some contracts paying that owed me money now. <laughs> so um, I'm okay for that. It's more the, uh, especially in the indigenous dance community, we have, dance is very, um, uh, there's a spiritual level, there's a community level to it that gives us our strength. So finding that, we are finding it online, but it's, it's, there's a difference. It's, it's not always, I'm finding I'm not always prioritizing reaching out sometimes online because I get tired of being in front of the computer. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, being in front of the computer kind of gets to me after a while. So I try to find other ways, but um, I'm still finding my way in all this. I'm still finding how to keep the community strong, how to, uh, like Deidre, I find giving to the community. Tomorrow's going to be my first online lesson. I give to a group of uh, two-spirited LGBT youth group um, dance. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing some hoop dancing, tr traditional dancing and teachings because I do go into schools a lot as well. Uh, so we'll see how that goes, if how that uh, fulfills. But yes, I'm finding it difficult sometimes to get a routine and to, to know where to put my priorities at this point. Yes, thank you, Barbara. Um, Jay. Yeah, so uh, I, I agree with people about the routine. Uh, I think that's very important. Um, it's not too hard for me. So far, my, my mental health has been pretty good. I kind of like the being independent and doing things on my own. So uh, I'm okay, but I realize that everyone's different. And not everyone is used to uh, doing that. And I, I, at the same time, as important, I think it is to take advantage of this time to prepare for the future and to be productive. Uh, our, our physical health is very important, which is related to our mental health. So if you're like, listen to your body, I think, if you, if you don't feel you have the energy to do something, I think it's perfectly fine to relax. I think it's the balance that I'm trying to find uh, with being productive and using this time well, but also listening to my body to not overwork myself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you, Jay. Um, and we had someone join. Uh, do you want to, is it Naima? Naima, you want to introduce yourself? Or? Yes, yeah. sure. Uh, yes, you got it right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Naima. Uh, I'm on the board at Playwrights Workshop Montreal, and I'm also Director of Partnerships at Execo, an organization that uses arts and culture and, and uh, mediation to uh, help build a more inclusive society. Uh, so reaching different um, marginalized communities um, as in Montreal as well as uh, in Quebec and uh, sorry, northern Quebec, as well as um, the nor north of Canada uh, with indigenous communities, um, as well as homeless communities uh, closer to here, etc. So um, I just wanted, um, I mean, I think a lot of the things people are saying uh, resonate with what I'm seeing. On my end, uh, where the office um, staff is able to continue working remotely. Uh, but all of the mediation, most of the mediation activities have been suspended, which means, of course, that the marginalized communities are getting less access to those activities and to the support they usually get. Um, so I just wanted to add on the note of the digital side that we're looking at how we can uh, shift for, for the time being and maybe in the future. Uh, but there's also a question of how you reach people digitally that don't necessarily have access uh, to the same platforms as we do. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. And on the personal side, um, I think like everybody, it's uh, ups and downs. Um, you know, I think this is a difficult period for everyone. I'm especially concerned about everyone's mental health, um, my own family, as well as artists and uh, communities um, across the world um, and yeah I just want to encourage people as as well as Jay did to take the time you need um, I think something that helped me when I was dealing with uh, my father's cancer 
uh, he's doing well, by the way, so you can feel okay, <laughs> um, is to see it more as a marathon than a sprint, uh, to realize that we need to take it day by day, um, and that um, we do have a large support network. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Yes, we're, I think we're realizing more and more that it is not going to be a sprint. <laughs> it keeps getting extended. Um, Louise, did you have your hand up? Yeah, um, I think one of, on a personal note, one of the things that I have been realizing every single day is how incredibly lucky I am and how incredibly privileged I am. Mm -hmm. And for absolutely nothing that I have done, but simply because of the situation that I was born into. Um, and some of this is because I'm converting one of my uh, projects online and it's, worth, it's with people who have severe physical disabilities. And if I feel, honestly, I don't feel isolated. I have so many people who are calling me. I'm, I am self-isolating right now, I'm seven days in, um, but I have lots of people who are calling me, offering support. And one of the clients in this project recently moved into a long-term care facility. Her family cannot come in, she cannot go out, she's nonverbal. She communicates with her eyes and we have no way of reaching her. So, I'm really lucky. Honestly, right now, today, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. And I'm going to do my best to try and find a way to make sure that this woman is part of our project. And I know that the director is working really hard to find a way to make sure that she's part of the project, even if we can't necessarily speak in some form. So there's lots of other uh, clients in this program that, you know, one man who he has voluntary action, he can tap a phone. So she's asking yes, no questions. And he taps twice for yes, beep, beep and once for no, and that's how he can communicate. So um, I guess what I can do with my luck and privilege in life is to try and find a way for people who don't have the kind of support system and networks that I have uh, to try and help them through this time. Great, thank you so much. Um, anyone else have anything to add on, on the last question from Larry? And their personal impacts. Okay, there. Hey. You okay, know. good. Thank you. Um, yeah, it affects everybody uh, emotionally, and, and uh, I think we don't even know. Sometimes we don't know that there's an underlying anxiety. I, I resonate, Louise, with what you said, because just uh, at the end of December, uh, my mother, uh, just almost uh, 97, passed away, and I keep thinking. If she was still alive, she'd still be in her retirement home. I wouldn't be able to see her. She can't. She couldn't hear, and uh, and had some dementia. So it must be just awful for people who are trying to bridge that gap. So it's um, very important to, to to very important to recognize ourselves as as human beings in the middle of all this as well, in spite of whatever our responsibilities might be. Um, I, I would like to. Mm, what you say, uh, hone in on um, the, what you're actually doing uh, to overcome the problems that you've all spoken one way or another about what, what you're doing. But can, let's see if we can be specific. I don't know if there are any platforms you like to use, but we'd like to get as many ideas, or if you know of somebody who's doing something that you wish you could do, but you don't know how to do it. Um, I hear, we've heard a lot from for example, uh, particularly choir, choral people, um, that uh, getting their choir to sing together doesn't work on Zoom, and is there, is, they're all asking, "What is that? Is there a platform we can use?" So, so let, let's just take a few minutes, if if you would like to share things that you have found, either digital or non-digital. Is there, you know, going door to door and waving at people? I mean, just uh, how are you trying to do your work in the middle of this um, uh, crisis? Yes, Deirdre. It's kind of odd, but um, I live in Vaudreuil Dorion, and uh, so uh, so everybody goes for a walk every day. Uh, I don't know if I can show you. Can I flip the camera around? My camera around? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> can you try? Okay. If you can flip my camera. 
so that, oh no, wait a minute, I can just turn it around. Hold on, I'll see what I'm doing. Just let me turn my camera around. My uh, computer, I mean. So I saw all these people walking by, and I said, uh, they're just looking at houses, so, you know, because everything's quite gray. So I'll just show you here, just a second, I go very slowly. So, oh, wait a minute, I have to close that. I apologize, just a second. Okay, so I'll go outside. You can see that, just give me a second. And I put out um, a gallery of art in my window. Just a second, please. Oh, I also, I put some chickens. I put some chickens in my front door. I've been doing drawing. And then I also, uh, sorry. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, but I have a gallery in my window of art. Did you see that? Okay, so I have an art gallery. So those are the two things I'm doing. And then I was speaking to a friend uh, yesterday and she was saying, I think it's in Halifax, which is something else I'd like to try with my city, is people are going for walks and they've asked people to put teddy bears in their windows so that kids, when they're going for their walks, they could they say, go and find the teddy bear or something like that. So I think I'd also like to try and do that. I have another artist friend who um, she's taken all of her Christmas decorations and she's wrapped her trees in her front yard. So when people walk by, they have all these beautiful wrapped trees and then there's a few other artists who have also uh, gone and done that. So those are a couple of the initiatives uh, that uh, I've seen and done. Thank you, Deirdre. Uh, yes, Barbara. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen some of my art in my neighborhood too. Uh, right now I live on the West Island of Montreal. I don't live in Ganawagi. And uh, I have put, uh, Facebook is seems to be my main platform. So I have put like some drumming for healing on that in my neighborhood uh, Facebook page, which people have responded to. And I have considered, but I, I haven't done it yet. Um, I guess I'm a bit shy of offering a, a, a dance performance outside their house that they could watch. Uh, <laughs> because a, a lot of our dances are, are healing dances. So um, like offering a hoop dance, if they just will message me a time and their address and I'll go outside their house and I'll dance for them, you know? I've considered it, but I'm a little shy because it's a non-native community. So I'm not sure how people are gonna respond uh, to this offer. So I'm, I'm thinking of it. <laughs> that sounds incredible. <laughs> Keep us posted if you do that. that that's great. Uh, yes, Alan. It does sound incredible. <laughs> well mm -hmm. done. Some wonderful thoughts. Uh, with, with me, uh, the, the, the best thing that, that I can do right now is, is just stay in touch with, with, with any, any interested sort of stakeholders, whether they're, they're, they're students. I, I actually employ a number of art professors to help me do, do research, and, and we just you know, exchange a few emails, let people know that they're, they're still relevant and we still, you know, we still care. It can be, it can be, uh, it could be, you know, somebody who, who's considering buying something. It could be somebody who owes me, owes me money. It could be uh, an elderly lady in, in, uh, no, I've got elderly ladies in, in Wakefield, if I may say that. Um, and, and just staying in touch, uh, Knowing that, letting people know that you're thinking about them, not 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 specifically on a on a commercial basis, just just the um, the, the the compassionate end of, of even the commercial side of the uh, of the art world, and that's what we're we're focused doing uh, with with our community that subscribes to our our website and blog posts. As I mentioned, we do we're 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 creating communications that are 
or just about about an artist you know who is philip surrey and i'm and i'm writing a few hundred words about my experience with this with this person uh and you know in my world people people like stories and a lot of the information is firsthand and i can i can tell my story if people can choose to read it or otherwise but we do find that some people self isolated they 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 have the time and and you know some of them some of them are are enjoying it certainly lots and lots of them are opening it uh, and that's that's kind of the best we can do right now great <clears throat> thank you uh louise did i see you had your hand up yeah um i just wanted to say barbara if i lived closer i would love to have you come <laughs> uh i've actually had my nieces have come over and we've had a dance party with them on one side and me on the other and I've read them storybooks and I didn't have my gear put together, but I plan on giving them a concert through the window as well. Um, so, and I have, you know, my nieces artwork taped up to my window too. Uh, so as much as like the, the internet is wonderful and I am using Zoom and I am using posts on my website to uh, give people access to will this has not happened yet but i will be giving people access to instructional videos once i figure out how to do it that will be posted on a website <laughs> um, i'm really also really relying on this lovely device here so uh recording phone conversations that people submit stories um that people if they play an instrument at home i can record it on it if we get it like placed at a decent enough place um, just trying to figure out a way that uh the conversation doesn't become about the technology but the conversation becomes about uh, the communication, what we're living and the, the artwork and what we need to share together. And whatever the platform is, I just, I'm trying my best to make sure that it's as li least frustrating for other people as possible. So if it means, you know, somebody coming in drumming for me, I would love that. That's great, thank you, Luis. Uh, Jay. Yeah, so I mean, uh, to be specific about like when I was when people saying routines, uh, I, I treat I treat the weekday like I would normally treat a weekday, for instance, and I treat a weekend the way I would normally treat a weekend. So I I I I, I reward myself, relax. I don't do anything. It would I, I do my usual weekend relaxing kind of thing. So I find that's that helps me. I know a lot of people have been saying that the days are kind of like a blur. They can't tell if it's Monday or Tuesday. And I think that could be problematic for your mental health and in terms of being productive. So I think it's, for me, I write in my journal what I'm doing, okay, my do list. I'm treating it like a normal day. Uh, what we've been doing specifically for my co-op is that usually we'd be having a movie screening for the March break camp that we just did. And it's a big event. We we uh, we show all the movies that we made during the camp, and the kids love it. The parents love it. Obviously, not a good idea now. So we're try uh, It's actually starting tonight. We're we're doing an uh, online premiere through YouTube. So basically, YouTube has a function that you could premiere your video, and you could set a time and date, and then you could get a link to that video that has a little countdown on it. So that's gonna, we want it to be as, as special of an experience as possible. So that's what we're gonna try to do for that. And then we're gonna have a watch party um, on Facebook because YouTube doesn't allow comments for kid videos. So we're gonna have a watch party where you can watch the movies together and you could comment on the videos. So that's gonna be a new experience for us. Also, I wanna say uh, as a multimedia person, Anyone here, I invite you, if you have any questions or if you want some advice on how to make a decent video, I'd be happy to help. So uh, yeah, just advice, like if you, you know, feedback, if you want any, if you don't know the technology about how to do videos, I'd be happy to help people. So uh, yeah, let me know. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Jay. That's fantastic. Claire. Uh, yes, uh, so on a personal level, um, I myself is, I'm keeping in touch with my family and my, my personal students, and especially my two-year-old niece who calls me every day <laughs> and who runs around with my sister and doesn't know what to do with her all day long. But I find that when we sing songs on Facebook or on, um, on Zoom, she calms down and she really likes uh, just singing and, and stuff like that. So that's a positive experience. On, um, more professionally for our big event that we were planning for the end of April was Compositeur en Herbe, so budding composers, which is, um, it's kind of the uh, 
the final culminating point of our year. We have a whole bunch of workshops in schools with um, choir workshops and, and uh, music composition workshops with composers. And, and um, so we were supposed to have all these people, about 100 kids, come to uh, Complexe des Jardins at the end of April and either perform, so present their music projects or sing a song like with uh, about 100 kids. And we had about 20 professional musicians involved in that. And so it's, it's a big event. And so we're lucky to have our grants sustained for these projects. And so we're trying to um, keep the contracts with the artists maintained. And we're looking at, I'm constantly talking with uh, the artists to see how we can uh, keep on giving the workshops online. So we have a few schools that have like um, a secondary school that we're working with that they, they switch really quickly to um, Google Classroom. And so the teacher is still giving all the classes every day with the, the normal schedule. So that's, that's really good for us because we can like kind of um, uh, profit from that and have our, our artists give the workshops online. So that's, so that's for the composition workshop. But for the choir workshop, we're dealing with what Larry, you were talking about, the <laughs> live singing together is kind of uh, a challenge <laughs> because of all the lagging problems. So I'm working with a team and right now we're looking at some options with using Zoom, like to get everybody together for the visual and using some multiplayer um, video game channels for the, the audio. So yeah. So I don't know, we were just talking about it, exploring. I know somebody who did that and it worked well. So we're, we're kind of exploring that right now, but if anybody has any ideas, we'd be open. So our event was supposed to be at the end of April, but we're going to move it to the end of May, probably. We're looking at a date uh, to give us some time to <laughs> think about all that and see how we're going to do the workshops and maintain the, the workshops and um, do the event. Um, but it's it's we're it's pretty exciting because we're finding ways to do that. So I, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll be able to, and uh, we have some choirs that have that are going to take part that are already practicing uh, the songs. So so people still want to to do it, and we have also two throat singers that were supposed that that are part of the the musicians. Um, and so that was a challenge also because the two throat singers that we usually have, they live in different houses, so we couldn't have them uh, perform together because when you have throat singers, they have to be two together facing each other. So we found uh, one of them has a, a teenage daughter who's going to sing with her. So they're going to be able to do that um, online, which is nice. So anyway, we're trying, we're finding ways of, of doing the event. Um, yeah, so, and as for the educational platform, as I said, we're using all our time to make it even better. Uh, yesterday I was on a Facebook group of music teachers in Quebec. There's about 2,000 teachers and they, they, they were doing a, a survey, a poll, with um, all the educational uh, sites in music for music teaching. So they did that. This is independent and they were asking all their members to um, comment all these sites. And so the SMCQ educational platform was on that poll. And so um, I reached out to them and they invited me to come and present a webinar on the platform next week. So we're, we're keeping in touch with our contacts and just kind of looking around what is going on and how we can be there and help out and, and, and improve what we have. So asking people, um, how they're using our, our website, our educational platform, and how we can make it even better so that it works for them. So that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> A lot. Awesome. Thank you, Claire. Uh, Deirdre. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, put another link in the uh, chat window. Um, it's a pop-up virtual art hive. It's the art hive that's out of Concordia. And once everything closed up, they went online. Um, they have every day at uh, one in the afternoon at 8 p.m. You can come, it's a regular archive. I don't know if, it, if you know what that is, but there's a moderator. Uh, you bring any materials, you can uh, draw, talk, 
you could be seen, not be seen, you can paint, you can have, you can share information. It's, it's very, very open with, a, with very loving, gentle uh, moderators. And one of the things that they found out that they had never thought of is that there are a lot of people that uh, can't leave their homes for whatever reason or are too embarrassed to show their face. And so you have the option of uh, not being no video, no sound, but you can still speak if you wish to. Um, I highly suggest that uh, you spread the news. Um, it's helped me a lot uh, to have that community. I mean, my kids do call me a million times a day, which is wonderful. But it's uh, nice to have this other avenue for sharing, and I usually go at least once a day. So you can, there's the Zoom information for you. That's great. Thank you. Um, anyone else have any um, any comments on on te technology that you're using to sustain your work at this point, or any other method methods that you're using to uh, to do your work? Um, one. Uh, one comment, I just saw this recently, or yesterday, about Zoom is that it is getting, uh, they're encountering some problems with it now that everybody's using Zoom, is that security issues with it. Um, when you're posting Zoom links uh, live, people can kind of hack it and they can come in and they can uh, um, post all sorts of inappropriate things, et cetera. So um, just, Something to be aware of. I'm, uh, there are a few different methods to try to combat that, um, but just as uh, when you post a Zoom link publicly, there's that. There's that is um, apparently it's a new problem. Uh, Emma. Yeah, um, I think for the the theater community, if if someone does figure out a way of getting multiple people on a screen, where then um, the voice that is being sent is not lagged behind in terms of, of presenting public readings of new scripts, which is, I think, work that a lot of people want to do, which would help to employ actors. If anyone figures that out, much like the choir, that would be uh, an awesome thing to share with, with everyone. If, mm -hmm. I don't know how that happens, but. Yeah. Um kind of Claire's suggestion was the first one that I heard of anybody um, that was, was a very creative suggestion and I can see as far as the audio goes because everybody's having that problem. How do you link up audio across these platforms? So that was, uh, that was the first kind of uh, suggestion I've heard that could potentially work. I don't know, I'm very interested. Let us know how that goes. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not a gamer, so I don't even know what multiplayer video <laughs> yeah. software is. Yeah. yeah. Well, there is that issue with um, with access, of course, certainly. Um, yeah. Anyone else have anything? We can move on to the next question, Larry. Thank you very much. Um, a number of you have already touched on the next question, but I, again, I'd like to sort of drill down into it a little bit. Um, a couple of you have made very um, um, very compassionate uh, statements about the fact that there are people, you know, there are communities are out there suffering in various ways. And there are things that we can do with the arts, through the arts, to somehow try to ameliorate the situation. Uh, this, we're not, I guess, in this particular <laughs> venue, or in this particular round table, we're not doing artwork. But, but I feel a great deal of satis personal satisfaction doing these uh, sessions because always I have the feeling that people are have very happy to have a chance to connect with colleagues and, uh, and, 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 and share what, what the picture is between them and so on and share ideas. So, so it gives me a, a great deal of satisfaction. And I know that some of you are thinking that same way too, is how can we, as an arts community, arts and learning community, how, what can we do or what, what have you tried to do to um, just help people get through this difficult time. In other words, applying what you do to the current situation. Yeah, we've touched on this uh, through a variety of different uh, 
ways that you're doing it personally, but uh, as far as what the network is doing, obviously we're doing these roundtable discussions and um, and uh, Caitlin, actually, if you want to, uh, if you're able to uh, post the length of the resources that uh, Caitlin has been compiling. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to drop in the uh, message box a link um, to our website with a very, or pretty, whoops, where'd it go? Um, exhaustive list of resources that I've been compiling over the past couple of days now, a couple of weeks, I guess. Wow. Um, there's information there about funding opportunities, um, emergency funding and grants, and also a lot of um, like skill sharing resources that people have shared with us. Um, Deidre, the resources that you shared with the chat group, I've already added them in, or I'm working on adding them in right now. So if anyone else has any other kind of um, like skill sharing type links like that, I would love to include them on the page. If you would like to let me know, I'll, I'll draw my email address as well. If you want to send me an email or in the chat, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Caitlin. Yes, Maria, welcome. Hello, sorry, I don't know how to raise my hand with the icons. I'm that's okay. <laughs> So um, I'm Maria Escurra. I am teaching art in the Faculty of Education at McGill. I also run the McGill Art Hive Initiative. We have been running it for more than two years. And I'm also practicing artists and I work as an artist in residence for, um, right now I'm with dentistry in McGill. So of course this is affecting me in many different ways depending on like which, uh, where I am working at at the moment. Um, I just maybe wanted to share uh, two things related to, to the last question. Um, as a teacher, of course, when we were asked to finish our courses online, uh, I'm teaching two studio classes in McGill, Basic Art Media, and the second one is uh, Sculpture. So finishing a sculpture class online seemed, seemed very, very difficult. Uh, Luckily, I had already kind of given the students like some instructions and showed them some examples to start working on their assignments uh, in the studio. So what I did is I asked them to finish at home and I just kind of really, really open like the options and try to make them feel like uh, that art was maybe more a possibility to relax and be stressed more than having the pressure like doing something that was perfect and like the deadline is in two weeks and probably like half of my students have already submitted like amazing work saying how grateful they are for having had the option of working on something that was creative and, and they could use their imagination and like put all this anxiety and uncertainty in, into something like using their hands instead of just like wait be waiting without knowing what to do so it was very touching for me to see how the arts in a way were, were good for some people, were like a good way of, of dealing with, with this. And then um, the second project I'm working in is the, the Archive, which is, it's a space, it's a, a space, a room, I don't know if you know the, the Archives, I, I saw someone actually publish a link to the pop-up uh, virtual Archive. Uh, so of course, how can we keep offering that safe space to people when we cannot actually meet? And we were thinking in starting something like this with Zoom, but then a lot of concerns uh, regarding safety, as you were just mentioning, came up. So we started by doing like Facebook live events in which we are like just, I am giving like little art sessions. It's funny because I hate cameras, as you just saw, I was most of this meeting with my camera turned off. I'm not into technology. I don't like cameras. Uh, but then you just have to overcome that. This is not about us. <laughs> this is about, this is much more bigger. So I'm just like once, uh, three times a week, giving little activities. And of course the challenge was how, again, how to make it like really, really inclusive. So I'm being focusing on art that you can do with just some paper and a pencil or a pen. Like you don't need to have access to all these like fancy art supplies to make something. It's about the experience basically. Uh, but the reason for which I am here today is because I'm still wondering, should we use Facebook Live or Zoom? Or I don't know, how can we really do something that feels meaningful and useful when we are like so restricted in, in so many ways? But it's also been very interesting because I have been like in touch with different communities of artists and educators. 
and, and not like people like you. And I think we all are sharing like a lot of common concerns. And um, that's, uh, yeah. well, thank you for opening this space today. Um, great, thank you so much, Maria. And we also have Jesse joining. Jesse, if you, do you want to do a welcome? Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Sorry, I think we're working against each other there. There you go. <laughs> um, my name is Jesse Krell and I, I live and work in Montreal and I, I run a small business called Hands On Media Education where we're teaching creativity through media and digital literacy skills. Um, and so I've been uh, affected a lot by this, um, like everyone. Uh, we do a lot of workshops in schools, um, working with students as well as teachers and teaching teachers how to use technology in smart, effective and responsible ways. Um, and so like Maria, like you were just saying, um, we, we, do, we do deliver workshops remotely. I do a lot of work in the Northwest Territories as well. I physically go there, but there's also a lot of communities that are inaccessible by even plane. So I do a lot of remote video production workshops with students and teachers up there. But um, I've been wanting to ramp that up. But now with this, there's like obviously a new urgency um, for my own uh, organization. And so uh, Maria, just like you're saying, like there's such a, there's such a power in this opportunity to create. And I'm really feeling empathetic for parents right now who don't necessarily even want to be involved in the process, <laughs> but they want their students to have something to do, their kids some, something to do. Um, that is really, that's, that's for them, but also it's a, it's a great opportunity to be documenting and creating during this time. Um, I'm, I just came from a filmmaking workshop. That's why I'm late, so I apologize. But it's an opportunity for me to just do something um, and not just be passively consuming information, but to actively create. And that's a, a key part of media literacy as well. Um, so, so yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm perhaps naively optimistic, but I feel like that's the only way to move forward and not to think kind of big picture. Uh, my organization, we're with my advisory board, we're about to shift into being a nonprofit and there's a huge amount of um, uncertainty around even grants that we would be eligible for, that would even exist um, now, but I, I can't get too overwhelmed with the unknowns. I think we just have to move forward and from the research that I've done and people that I've been speaking to in the last few weeks, it seems like, yes, there will be grants that will have dried up, but there also will be new opportunities. So I'm trying to just full steam ahead. Let's, let's do it. Let's see what we can do. And, and just, I, I have faith in the work and the expertise that I have. And I really do want, if they're, if you're going to be on your computer or your phone, we we really need to be teaching critical thinking skills for everyone and uh, i feel like this is even more necessary than even before so yeah. thanks, for, thanks for having this discussion thank you jesse uh yeah jay uh so i i wanted to comment on what maria said but quickly i i want to agree with jesse about critical thinking skills very important uh at, Everyone being online right now, apparently, so uh, a lot of hackers and just predatory people, individuals are taking advantage of the fact that everyone is online right now. And then obviously we have politicians, corporations trying to take advantage of the situation. So I think it's important that we stay media literate. We be careful before we download any apps that we don't know about, make sure that they're the right ones or that they're necessary. There is an alternative to Zoom that I just heard about and I forgot what it was called, but I, I'm pretty sure a little um, Google search, whatever, you will find it. So anyone, I think Maria was saying she was looking for something different. Um, there is apparently one, I haven't tested it out yet. Uh, but I, what I originally wanted to say to Maria was that um, I could relate how difficult some teachers uh, have it when it comes to having an online course. 
Um, and maybe it's an obvious comment, but as it, it could help uh, to do the one-on-ones with a mix of uh, video that was uh, recorded. So maybe, because uh, that way you could have different angles. Uh, you could, so if it's dance or if it's sculptures, you could do the one-on-ones where you get to respond, but you could also have some video that once you film it once, the gift that keeps on giving. And so it's maybe inter, um, incorporating already filmed and edited video with the one-on-ones could help. That's what I want to say. Okay, great. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Deirdre. Uh, just about the platforms. Um, I remember once watching some media guru and she was saying that there's 10 million platforms. Just choose one that you're already comfortable with or do research and choose one. You can't do them all. I personally, uh, I've been in meetings for Zoom, through Zoom, and I found it pretty easy to manipulate. I did uh, buy a subscription for the year um, and I did get this update saying that they're working on the uh, security issues. Um, I, I personally really like it and I always, when I work with the kids, it's the parents who set up everything and then I give information on the side. Um, so I, I, I'm just concerned about spending so much time on finding different platforms when usually what's right in front of you could be uh, very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, people do have their favorites. Uh, we've been hearing people whatever the students want. So people are still using Skype and, and Zoom and, and Google Classroom, I think. There's a, there's a Google one and uh, Facebook. So um, yeah, you have to do whatever works for you, of course. <laughs> Anybody else have any other, any other comments? Um, as far as, uh, again, Caitlin talked about uh, the document that she's created and the network. Uh, likely you potentially know about the Canada's map of arts and learning. We're also kind of uh, expanding that and um, learning more about what people are doing digitally and and uh, working on getting a directory of, of arts and learning uh, that can happen digitally. So teachers that are teaching online uh, for people who are looking for private lessons right now or group lessons online, uh, trying to get that up and running as well. So if you're looking at uh, getting another way to promote yourself, we're looking at that as well. But uh, we want to know, of course, uh, like I think Claire was saying what else they can do, but we want to know as a network what we can do uh, to support you uh, beyond uh, this. This, as Larry said, has been very helpful for us, but also we feel that people, we hope that people who are coming are, are getting quite a bit out of it to be able to talk to their colleagues and hopefully learn some more uh, about how to uh, help sustain their work during this time. But um, we're looking at additional ways to continue the work that we do to support the sector. So very interested to hear if you have any ideas for us or any thoughts on how we can continue the work that we're doing um, to help support what you're doing. Yes, Jay. Uh, so yeah, right off the bat, my head goes to grant writing because I am just horrible at it. Um, paperwork and all that kind of stuff. So that's something, whether it's uh, letting people know about grants that are uh, available to us, but even like helping navigate through the process, uh, that to me is very valuable. Great, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we do actually have, right now we have um, online, we have a, and maybe Caitlin can post it, we have funding opportunities on our website and we continue to add to it all the time and it's a regional and it's also, um, there's many different filters that you can use to, uh, to look for funds that, that you can apply for. Um, and perhaps we'll try to find some grant writers as well that you can reach out to if uh, looking for, when you're looking for support or something, potentially a webinar we could also ask. Yes, Jesse. Trying to unmute you. Good. There we go. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, um, I, I'm, I'm going to launch a, a media education workshop series for six weeks for free for, for students at home. And I'm wondering if there was an opportunity for you to, 
to promote that through a newsletter or if if you add that or I don't know if you do that, but if that would that would be very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we definitely do that. Uh, we have also um, a calendar online. So for instance, if it's going to be happening on certain days, you can add that for free completely. Oh, um, and we do take from that calendar uh, events that we put in our newsletter. And and also we can help uh, do that through social media as well. We can, we can spread it through our social media channels. Uh, please definitely use all the resources on our website that's where we get our information so we can because we we really do want to share this far and wide because we do want to support the sector and uh, and yes Louise so you have your hand up. I'd actually personally be really interested in a media literacy and critical thinking for professional artists <laughs> because I think some of this situation is um, causing me and many other people to barrel straight ahead and just plunge into things that we don't necessarily know anything about and so I'm sure that there are some potholes that I don't even realize that I'm putting my foot straight in. Mm. Um, so that would be very helpful for me. Uh, the other thing that I'm building into my projects right now is backup because the reality of the situation is that people are going to get sick. And I think it would be awful for me to start an initiative that I then can't follow through, whether it's because I'm ill or because I need to look after someone who's ill. So I am building um, redundancy in, you know, in the sense of like, I, I have other people who can step in and take over something if I need to. And I think that CNL could possibly um, provide a way to connect for artists if they don't have those resources, if they don't have that kind of community support. It might be a way to, to make our um, offerings more sustainable during a time when there's a lot of uh, instability. Great. Yes. Excellent suggestions. Thank you. And um, if anyone else has any thoughts, we will also be sending um, a survey uh, within the next few days um, with, to get your thoughts on, um, on what has happened here today, as well as with that question, if there's anything else that you can think of that, uh, how we can help you. Um, so uh, do feel free to, to fill that out when that comes by. And also we'll be sending, as Larry mentioned, the recording. The recording will also have the chat on it, the link. Uh, so you will be able to see uh, the links that were posted here today. And uh, just in case you missed anything or wanna go back on anything there. And uh, and yeah, um, I don't, was there, I think there was, was there anything else you wanted to add there, Larry, at this point? You no, know, I think we've covered quite a lot today. And, uh, and uh, a lot to think about and a lot to, um, if you do have links, please either add them to the chat now or just send them to us and, uh, and we'll, we'll put them on, we'll, we'll share them. I just want to thank everybody very much for taking the time to join us. And uh, it's, it's a meaningful conversation for me always. So I, I hope it's meaningful for you. And I look forward to reconnecting in the future. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Do please do stay in touch. Let us know what's going on. Bye. Thanks very much, everyone. Okay.